Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Dad Bod Transformation Podcast. I'm your host and resident nutritionist, John Kovaleski, and my guest today has had an inspiring journey to say the least. As a son of immigrant parents who actually met on the Coney Island Boardwalk in New York City, he was a troubled youth that saw a few run-ins with the law. He has survived a battle with drug addiction that left the, that resulted in an overdose that left him with permanent brain damage that affects his memory, um, contracting hepatitis C, and the resulting year-long tr- treatment that which it, tur- it in turn left him with low testosterone. Um, he struggles with stress and anxiety over all of those experiences. But now, fast forward to today, he's a father of two. He builds kitchen by kitchens by day. And works at a bakery by night, all while striving to become the 500-pound man. And we'll let him explain that to you in just a little bit. Um, I'm eager to hear him elaborate on his story because after reading his bio, I'm I'm pretty inspired myself. So please welcome Ivan Pavlovich. Ivan, how you doing, buddy? There you are. I am good. Um, My name is Ivan, not Ivan. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. Sorry, I should have probably clarified that. Um, but hey, how, hey, how, is how are you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, definitely glad nervous. You, uh, uh, it, it's completely all right. I'm actually a little nervous too because, like I was explaining to you before, I'm using my new podcast setup with the new software, so I'm trying to make sure that everything goes right, and uh, hopefully, things so far so good, and hopefully, everything goes smooth. So yeah. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to get together tonight and, uh, and talk. We had had some conversations and we were trying to put this together and we finally able to set a time and get things going. So yeah. I guess to start off, um, I mean, I know I touched on the, the condensed version of your journey, but, um, kind of explain to everybody how everything that you went through when you were younger and as, as you know, coming up. Um, how that got you to the point where you started focusing on health and fitness? Um, well, let's see. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess medically I've had it rough since I was a kid. Uh, when I was four months old, I had a mega yoder block canal. So they had to end up putting me under and fixing that. And then as I was growing older, as I started hitting or getting closer to the age of puberty, I found out I had uh, an ablate or I ended up needing an ablation of the heart for an arrhythmia problem. So really my heart works on one anode where oh. everyone else works on two. Right. Um, but yeah, I was like during for like two years of my life during that time, I was on adult blood pressure medication and like there was a lot to sleep in class, which followed me for a bunch of years afterwards, which was nice, but, uh, right. whatchamacallit, then, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know, like, uh, as I was growing older and stuff like that, uh, you know, parents start breaking, like, my parents ended up divorcing when I was in my teenage years, and I don't know if it was acting out or I was just trying to be cool and stuff, I ended up falling into, like, the wrong crowd of people, got into a whole slew of trouble right and had just been basically now i don't know i guess maybe trying to fill a void with like you know substances instead of just actually focusing on myself and then i ended up getting clean for a while and then ended up relapsing dying and then that made me realize like you know, I'm like, I guess in a sense, like the master of my own universe. And if I don't take control Absolutely. and take care of myself as a temple, mm-hmm. I can't move forward. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so many people um, that I've talked to throughout this journey of becoming a coach and even more so since I've gotten involved with the Dad Bio Transformation Group, um, so many people, although their stories may vary, um, they all have that thing. They all have that catalyst in their life that gets them to the point where they say, okay, um, I need to do something different. I need to find a way to improve myself o- on some yeah. level. And, and it sounds to me like you've had more than one experience like that. Yeah. 
yeah, really, like, I guess my really biggest saving point is my kid, you know? Mm-hmm. He was really the reason that I've been trying to get my shit together, there, you know? It's right. Also, he's part of the reason why I want to become the 500-pound man, too. Right, right. So, so elaborate a little bit on that. I mean, I have a general idea of what you're talking about, but just so everybody else knows. Oh, all right. So it's basically where all my Olympic lifts are at least 500 pounds. So, like, uh, you know, squat, deadlift, clean and press, shoulder press, bench, like, all at least 500 pounds. Now, would my deadlift probably be more than 500 pounds if, like, I can bench 500? Yes, because I also would like the aesthetic appeal of being large, you know? I don't want to be, like, you know, like, all chest and, like, no legs and back. Like, that's, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of weird. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, so that's really my goal, you know, and I want to reach that goal so that like my kid can see that like if you put your mind to something, as long as you work hard at it, you can get it. Yep, yep. That's that. That's awesome. You know, it's so many people tend to forget, you know, and not just us as fathers. You, you know, mothers do the same thing. Um, our kids learn from us. You know, they yeah. pay attention. They pay attention to what we do. Um, you know, and, and, and they have a tendency to, to try to walk down the same paths that we walk down because I mean, I know when, when I was a kid, I wanted to be like my dad. I actually became like my dad for a number of years. My dad was a mechanic. He worked in, in diesel repair shops. So for 20 years, that's what I did. I worked as a mechanic. Um, you know, so it's just, it's pretty normal for, for kids to want to do that and us as parents really need to be mindful of the kind of example that we set for them because they will follow us. Absolutely. So now the, the, so now the 500 pound man thing is now, is that just, is that something that was like a phrase or something that was coined in the area where, where you live or was that just something that you came up with? Where did that actual phrase, the 500 pound man come from? Um, it's a good number. Oh yeah, it's a, it's absolutely I, I, a good it just, number. It, I felt like I was like you know I you know I Google search like world records and stuff like that. I think the shoulder like shoulder press or clean and press. I think the world records around like five eighty five. Okay. You know I and maybe that's just solely shoulder press. I'm, I can't recall. Right. Um, and then I was like you know I was thinking to myself like you know like what. You know, like I had a goal of getting six pack. I accomplished my goal of getting six pack. Yeah, I have some hanging skin, but like I have a six pack now. Right. And so I was like, so really, what should my next goal be? And I'm like, and it should be a goal that's going to take me some time to like get to it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right. And, you know, I did the, um, I don't know if you ever watch anime or anything, but there's the One Punch Man. Yes. Where, I, well, I've heard of it. I, I don't. I don't watch. I don't watch it myself, but I have heard of it. Well, there's this workout regime he did like every day, and I did that workout regime literally every day for like a year and a half, uh-huh. except for the running straight for ten kilometers. I would. I work, so I added that to my walking around for the ten k. Sure. But where he'd do a hundred push ups, sit ups, and standing squats, mm. and I was just. I don't know. I was like thinking about numbers and i just like the numerical value of five and then 500 is like well well, that's hefty weight too you know you're no slouch if you can clean and press 500 pounds like right you know that's a lot of weight over your freaking head and i just Uh liked it yeah yeah absolutely um yeah i mean actually when when i first got into lifting weights um for me it was all about health but um i was i was in this facebook group and I didn't stay in there very long, but one of the things that, that one of the guys had posted about that, that kind of stuck with me was this thing he called the, the 500 by 50 club. And that was, you know, you, by, by the time you turn 50 years old, you, you want to be able to deadlift 500 pounds. That's, that's your goal. That's what you want to do. And that's something that yeah. any, any, any kind of portrayed it like it was some kind of an elite club. And to me, Oh, at that are. point in time, that it, it was like, yes, absolutely, that's what I want to do, and I jumped right in there, and and I've actually achieved that since. 
and, and gone past it. But it's like those things, those, those little things that you find to focus on are, are the driving mechanisms for anybody to, you know, to succeed at whatever fitness journey it is that they're trying. You to are do. breaking off. Am I? Yeah. Can, can you hear me okay? I heard like half of what you just said. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully the re- hopefully the vi- the recording software picked it up okay. It may just have been because I was moving around and I'm I'm wait- like my microphone is like right here and it's on like a okay. little foam thing so it doesn't pick up vibration. Um yeah. But yeah, I mean that that was me. I mean it was like the you know the 500 by 50 club and I jumped in and and that was a goal. And then, you know, there's there's been multiple goals throughout my journey that it's like okay I achieved this so what's next I achieved this so what's next and that's important you know um, for anybody that's trying to get healthy you know just because you reach a milestone you know don't say okay well I, I got this or I, I lost thirty pounds so I've done my job so now I'll go back to eating however one I eat and I won't exercise yep. and all that stuff it's all about changing your life. And you, from everything that, that, from everything that you have described to me through writing your bio and whatnot, everything that you've been through in your life, you've, you've been through a hell of a lot. And to be in the point that you are right now, I mean, it's phenomenal, man. It's absolutely phenomenal because there are a lot of people that would have went through half of what you went through and not be here to talk about it today. Yeah. You know? So, so. I don't have a hat on, but hats off to you, brother, because, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy thing to go through some of that stuff at all. Yeah, no, no, it's really not. Yep, yep. So now um, let's touch base on um, on your kids a little bit. I didn't want – you gave me a lot of information in your bio, which was awesome, by the way. Most people, they, they're like, it, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Um, but you, you like, went in depth and, and gave me a lot of good information. Yeah, we got to talk. What happened? The workout ain't the same no more. What? I get no fucking chest pumps no more, man. But we did your reps the other day. Training with Billy now. <laughs> Billy? His techniques are crazy. Billy! Yo, Billy just started working out a month ago, bro. Yo, Billy got no chest, no arms, no legs. You got shit like me, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Yo. I'm losing games with you, bro. You took my pre-workout, my protein, and my pinch of a belly. I'm losing games with you. Yo, I can't... I'm done. It's over. I'm done with beyond, bro. Like, then I... Take away belly. I'm done. Um, what I was getting ready to ask you, Evan, was I want you to elaborate a little bit more on the situation with your children. Um, yeah, so uh, my biological boy is seven. Uh, me and his mother are no longer together. Um, but... That allowed me to meet the wonderful woman I'm with now and mm-hmm. bring her, I guess, biological daughter into my life. But um, her child also suffers from gender identity disorder. So she thinks she's a he. And we work with her with that. Uh, there's no judgments here at all. Um, I don't judge I don't judge anybody unless you do me dirty. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so we deal with that. But that's more like, you know, I guess personal, like super personal. I don't know how comfortable I feel elaborating oh, no. too much on by that all area. Means, but. Yeah, by all means, you, you want to say what you the, – the reason I asked you to elaborate a little bit was – Um, I mean, I very easily could have included that information in the intro because you gave it to me, but, but rather than that, I wanted, I wanted people to hear in your own words, how you describe the situation, because, you know, the, the group is the dad by transformation group, and there are all shapes and sizes and kinds of dads in this group. And, and I think it's really, really important to highlight people like yourself um, that will, you know, no matter what the situation with the child, you know, th- you treat that child. I love her. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You treat that child like like your own. You love her yeah. like your own. You don't judge her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we live yeah. in a world where everybody judges everybody. Oh yeah, all the time. All the you time. know, I get back all the time. 
Sure, sure, absolutely. So do I. So do I. I, I. I'm in my 50s. I'm bald. I'm bearded, and I'm married to a woman that's almost 20 years younger than me. So I get it all the time too. We're in. We're in a convenience store, and and I literally had people come up and say, "Dude, why are you holding hands with your granddaughter like that?" And I'm like, "You got to be kidding me." So oh, that's yeah, up. yeah, it is. But but see that that's that's the thing, you know. Like you you we touched on it here. It's it's all about we live in a very judgmental society, and, yep. and I want I wanted people to realize that that you are one of those people, just like myself and a lot of others out there, that don't judge people, you know, all based on on their gender identity or the color of their skin or any of that. People are people, and you and you love them and and you accept them for who they are, and I think that's yeah. awesome. So, okay, so now. I, I got to talk about this because the first time we had any interaction, we kind of had a funny back and forth for a minute. Do you remember when you posted the video about a deadlift you were doing and you and I got into a conversation about um, the fact that you were at Planet Fitness and I was like, how the hell did you get away with that at Planet <laughs> Fitness? Do you remember that? Do you remember that conversation? <laughs> yeah. I, and I say that for a reason. Yeah, that's because my gym. Dude, yeah, yeah. And that's what you said to me. And I was like, well, shit, it's no wonder he could do that because he owns a damn gym. He can go in there and do whatever he wants. <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, the reason I brought that up was because it's like I had an experience with Planet Fitness myself. When I first moved, when I moved, I was living in Pennsylvania for a long time. And I moved back to West Virginia where I live now. And my son has problems with, he has problems with obesity he has problems with he has um, he has a real bad speech impediment. He is yeah. epileptic. He has epileptic seizures. Um, All right. And I tried to get him going to the gym because I myself know the healthier he is, the better his body's going to be able to handle all these other things that yeah, he's going exactly. on. So exactly. it's like, but but he was like he was like real stressed out. He didn't want to go to he, he didn't want to go to Gold's Gym where I went. You know, he yep. wanted to go to a more laid back environment. So I'm like, okay, well, this is what you'll do. Planet Fitness is across the street. I'll get you a membership at Planet Fitness. I'll drop yep. you off at Planet Fitness. You do your thing. And then I'll go to Gold's. Yeah. Um, so we did that. And for a week or two, everything was fine. And he's like, dad, he says, you know, I don't want to go anymore. And I'm like, why? He said, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing in there. He said, can, can you come in here and, and you know, kind of show me what to do? And I'm like, yep. well, yeah, sure. So I go in this place. We were there on a Friday and it was, it's, I, I walk in and there's a stack of about 15 pizza boxes on the counter because <laughs> they were get they were giving away yeah, free it's pizza. That first week of the month. Yeah. Some, yeah. They yeah. pick a day. The first week of the month, everyone gets pizza. Uh, right. Right. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm signing the guest waiver and there's this huge ass bowl of Tootsie Rolls sitting there yep. beside the guest waiver. And I'm like, how in the blue hell is somebody supposed to come in here and get motivated to stay fit when all you guys are doing is shove a junk food in their face? <laughs> now, don't misunderstand me. For anybody that watches this and goes to Planet Fitness, do not misunderstand me. Planet Fitness is absolutely awesome because there are a ton of people out there that do not want to go to a mainstream gym because they're incredibly intimidated. Yes. They're intimidated by the environment. They're intimidated by the people. Um, you know, so planet fitness has its place and it's wonderful for that. But like you no. take a guy like me, I go in there, I can do arms and some chest. And I actually tried to do some, some rack pulls one time on a Smith machine. And then it came over and gave me shit for using too many 45 pound plates. Yeah. I was using four plates aside and they're like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're only allowed to use two 45-pound plates aside on the Smith machine. And I'm like, you have got to be shitting me. So then I decide to go in another day with my son, and I'm going to train legs. Now, yep. back then, before my knees were giving me trouble, it was nothing for me to, to do like three sets of 10 with 1,000 pounds on a leg press. I yep. literally had to take every 45-pound plate in the joint and find a 120-pound girl to sit on top of the damn rack so I could do my set. I'm like, what in the fuck is this? You, you know how many I, times I've done that? I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Dude, I've seen you deadlift, so I could completely imagine. And again, guys, you know, 
don't do not misunderstand me for a second. Planet Fitness is awesome, and there are a lot of people. I personally know many people that have gone in there and and taken the step to get up off the couch, and they've absolutely changed their life. And and for that, I applaud them. But it's just there. The interaction that you and I had in the very beginning over that thing where you were deadlifted, I will never forget that as long as I live. And I told myself when, when we started talking about you coming on the podcast, I was like, I have got to bring that up because that shit was hilarious. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. Um, okay, so to sum everything up, I, I have a, you said you've seen bits and pieces of the podcast. I don't know if you've ever made it to the end or not, which you should start watching the whole things because they're pretty good, I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I ask the same question to all of my guests. Okay. And, and I have found the first couple of times I did this, I let people know what it was ahead of time so they could kind of prepare an answer. But what I found was if, if I just kind of bring this to you out of the blue, we wind up getting a, a, a lot more of an organic answer and it's usually a lot more thoughtful in the process. So by all means, if you need to take a minute to think about it, go right ahead. Um, my question to you, given the fact that you have gone through everything you've gone through, survived everything you survived, and, and managed to stay fit and, and live a lifestyle of, of health and fitness, if you had the ability to affect something about health and fitness on a global level, meaning that you could make a change that would, would, would be worldwide, what would it be? Get all the poison out of the food and water. Absolutely. Absolutely. Processed foods, horrible. Absolutely. Yeah, horrible. even water, even spring waters and stuff. You know what I mean? Really, the only semi safe water you drink would be oh. distilled water. Right. But then, like, but then you have processes, you know what I mean? A lot of you whatever epc or whatever it is free but really yes. like what that's just a petroleum product really it's just solidified gasoline that you pour your water into to hold it right you know like if i could just get rid of all just the poisons that are in foods that would mm -hmm. save the world undirely but on the previous topic of the planet fitness thing i say it's my gym like i don't know if you've ever seen the movie braveheart yes Okay, you know the Irish guy? Yeah. You know how he says it's my island? It's my island, yes. Yeah, that's like that's with my plan of fitness. Like that's my plan of fitness. Okay, so that's where that mindset came from then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome, dude, because I'm a huge fan of that movie. I love that movie. And and the Irish guy is actually one of my favorite characters on there. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, you know, he's a criminal in Ireland, but that's his island. And when he told people to come fight, they came. They came fight. regardless. You absolutely. know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, buddy. Well, look, uh, I'm going to let you go. It's been uh, it's been a great time, you know, talking with you. We've had some technical difficulties and whatnot. But, you know, when you do this stuff over the Internet, you kind of got to expect yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, um, just keep posting it in the group. Keep doing what you're doing because I think you're awesome. I think you're inspiring to a lot of people. And, Thank uh, you. Guys, by all means, follow his posts and whatnot in the group. And uh, I mean, we'll catch you at another time, buddy. All right, man. Be good. Peace out. Right. You too, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.